Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today I've got a really cool knife review slash knife overview to show with you guys. This is the Real Steel Knives Pathfinder, a, uh, a bushcraft folder designed by Ivan B, which actually at this point, I've handled enough of his designs that I'm, I'm starting to kind of recognize this aesthetic. This is a very uh, unique folding knife in that it actually has a Scandi grind, which is, uh, I, uh, in this particular case, is 15 degrees per side. It also has a really nice, larger aesthetic um, that's very open ergonomically. And, you know, to me, it... It, it looks a lot like something that might be kind of, it's kind of like a budget bushcraft shirogruff. Um, it's not quite a budget knife by my own definition, but my goodness is the price on this good. Uh, it's, it's such an interesting knife, uh, and I, I honestly can't wait to talk about it with you guys. I will link it down below. It's available in a few different configurations, um, so you can check that out if you want to. It does help my channel when you use those links, but that's entirely up to you. Thanks to my patrons for supporting me. Thanks to Real Steel for sending this in for review, and thanks. Uh, or make sure to follow me on Instagram at Metal Underscore Complex. You'd think I'd have that intro down. I still mess it up. Let's go ahead and measure this. It's not a small knife. Overall length is coming in at 8.75 inches. Blade length, 3.85 cutting edge, 3.75. Very, very similar to uh, knives like the Shogroff F95 or F3NS. In fact, many Shogroff knives share the same overall length. Uh, and then uh, blade to handle ratio, cutting edge length, right? There's a reason that this aesthetic is appealing to so many people, not to everybody, but this aesthetic is very, very appealing to a lot of people. We have the folding steak knife aesthetic, but we have a very good blade to handle ratio, uh, very traditional lines, right? It's kind of, you see that a lot with a lot of, uh, you know, flagship sure growth models. So that's kind of why I get that impression. Um, let's go ahead and uh, do some size comparisons. Any custom scales you find in this section can be found down in the description under Original Goat and Others. So up against the 8010 and the 8020.5, you can see here, this is not a little knife. I mean, it's even though it's not as robust, it's not like the knife is super duper slender either. It's it, This is a full knife profile and it's got a, you know, it's got a full size length more than, I would say this is approaching XL length, right? Got the cold steel. Got the cold steel crowd riled up. How dare you? you, you you're you going to claim that that's an XL? Well, I'll show you an XL. All right. Let's go ahead and put it up against the Spyderco PM2 and the Spyderco Para 3. Uh, definitely larger than both. Way more cutting edge as well. Which, funny enough, almost exactly the same handle length as the PM2. Uh, and then finally, let's put it up against the Benchmade Group Tillinger, in this case, the Ruder Hogue and the Hogue Deca. All righty. How's the action? This is a crossbar lock, and I forget what Real Steel calls theirs. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't really think it matters what all these companies are calling their own crossbar locks. Their crossbar locks. Uh, I, I call. I mean, I, I'm used to Benchmade's original Axis lock, and the, yeah, the patent ended, so they are legally allowed to do this. Um, but everybody has their own name, right? I don't know what it is. It works great though. Tension is about medium. Uh, you'll notice that this knife is not readily falling shut, but it is still, you know, you can still easily whip it shut. And that's because the thing runs on phosphor bronze washers, which honestly, it's always funny when we talk about washers and bearings. There's a certain point where there's like a certain crowd of people that go, you know, for that much money, it really should be running on bearings. As if like every knife above a certain price point runs on bearings because bearings are just that much more expensive. <laughs> They're not. Did you know that Civivi knives run on bearings? That's not a, that's not like a markup. There's, there's plenty of like multi-thousand dollar custom knives that run on washers and their action is actually superior to many bearing, uh, you know, operating knives because of the way that the, the internals are done, right? So it, it, it has nothing to do with the overall cost of the knife. It comes down to the style of knife, the, the purpose, the philosophy of use, right? What is the design, the intention of the design and the preference of the maker and what crowd he's trying to cater to. So this is a bushcraft folding knife, which you got to be careful about saying, because when you say, it's kind of like, you know, when you say XL knife and there are cold steel fans watching, because they'll, they will sprint to correct and inform. The bushcraft folks will do the same. 
Uh, let me make this statement. I am not a bushcrafter. I am not a bush lord of any kind. I have put zero points into bushcraft on my own life skill tree. So that's not what I'm here to talk about. I'm not going to attempt to inform anybody or teach anybody anything. That's not my day-to-day. -day. My day-to-day -day is uh, wake up, um, maybe go to the grocery store, uh, you know, oh, an Amazon package, I got to cut that open, you know, and then on rare occasions, I got to go outside and do some home projects. Maybe my knives get a little bit more of a workout then, but not really. I'm a regular guy. So um, the advantages here on a folding knife in the world of bushcraft, my guess is for most bushcrafty stuff, you're going to want a fixed blade. I honestly don't really care about that. Um, I just find it interesting that we have a scandy grind on a folding knife. But I do like the idea of a locking system being, you know, like this. This is a stronger locking system on a folder that's clearly meant for more outdoorsy stuff. And they, they put the cherry on top combined with the grind, which is really nice. It's very thin by the edge. The cherry on top is we have a pivot system that keeps debris out of the pivot, which is might be a problem, you know, if you use a knife outdoors a lot. The the Foster Bronze washers will absolutely do a better job of keeping debris out of the pivot versus bearings. Um, so I think that's kind of neat that they really did, you know, kind of the four corners of, you know, more of an outdoorsy folding knife. Will it do better than a fixed blade? Probably not, right? But I imagine that discussion will happen down in the comments one way or another. The action is good. The pivot action is good. The axis or the crossbar is good. Uh, the only, honestly, the only thing that bothers me a little bit is how small and pointy these little, or almost bullet style thumb studs are. I wish that they were a little larger. I wish we had a little more room cut out here because the amount of leverage I'm getting is just off of this last little tiny lip right here. Um, on a knife this size, I really like to see, and even, sorry, my nose is running. Even on a smaller knives, I like to see a, a thumb stud about the size of the, uh, on the Ontario rat. Um, so it's good. Uh, the, the, the pivot action itself is good. It's just access to that thumb stud is a little bit awkward. Everything else is fine. Um, but after three or four deployments of this thing, you're going to feel it on your thumb. <laughs> Definitely. Um, but that's okay. It's not a deal breaker. Let's go ahead and do carry profile. So uh, thickness up against the Spyderco Pair 3. So we actually have slightly contoured. This, these forest green micarta scales are really cool. Slightly contoured uh, micarta scales, and we have full steel liners. It is actually a little bit thicker, but I got to add, this really does add to the comfort of this thing. When it comes to ergonomic comfort on this knife, we're going to talk more about it, but boy, it is supreme. This is a very, very comfortable knife. And it's, it's because we have thicker contoured micarta scales. The thing fills the hand, right? Length and uh, height up against the PM2 in pair of three. Closed length, honestly, it's really not going to take up much more room in your pocket than the Spyderco PM2. And that's that those ratios we were talking about again, where you get a really good blade to, to weight ratio, or I'm sorry, blade to handle ratio. Uh, and then height wise, you know, even though we're thicker than the PM2, we're not quite as tall. Obviously, it's quite a bit larger than the pair of three, not quite as tall there either. Materials, micarta, steel, and what do we have? For the blade steel, we have 14C28N, which I think is magnificent. That is the type of steel that I like to see on a knife at this price point. No issues there. Weight. Oh, do we have mil oh, milling for weight reduction? We do. Just a little bit. I hope you can see in there. If you can't, just trust me. It's there. Not bad. 4.59 ounces on such a large knife. Um, and again, 3.85 inches of blade. Not perfect ratios, but very, very good. And your balance is... It's a little, a little bit back from the pivot, but not bad. Honestly, you know, I'm just really impressed with the overall compactness of a such, a, such a large knife. It's not, not a sentence. It's not a word, <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's really good. Let's go ahead and do a hardware check. I'm going to get out my tools as per usual. My tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools I use on this channel or the pinned comment right down in the comments there. The pivot is almost certainly a T8. And it is. And it's just on one side. So that's awesome. Now, we don't have any uh, uh, hardware showing except for the hardware that's meant for the pocket clip. And that's really nice. This looks good. But you will almost certainly have screws underneath here 
holding um, the liners together. But it's it's neat how they did this. It really does look good. And look at this. Look how the pocket clip slips in behind the scales. So the only thing you have to look at on the scales itself are the two holes for the screws that are required to hold the clip in. This is a really nice way of doing this. I love this. I wish more companies would do it. Obviously, it's not that difficult to do, right? It's not like the pocket clip has. I was always thinking, like, how are they going to get it milled into the liner? Well, they didn't have to. They just milled a pocket in to the micarta and put the screws through the micarta and then threaded them into the liners underneath, which is, boy, that's great, right? Just bypass the whole filler tab thing and do it like that. That's excellent. It'd be easy to take apart. Uh, doing anything with the, I mean, if you want to fully disassemble it and mess with the crossbar lock, um, that's going to be a little bit more tricky, but obviously very doable. Not really um, all that big of a deal. Uh, you should be able to do it if it's your first time. It's a little bit, yeah, but you'll you'll get it. Uh, and then the more times you do it, the easier it gets. So just be aware of that. It's not quite as simple as taking apart something like a liner lock or a frame lock. So. Anyways, uh, we weighed it. We did, okay, we need to measure the blade stock thickness. Let's go ahead and do that. Um, so the blade stock thickness on this guy, it is definitely time for new batteries. Definitely, definitely, definitely. I'm going to keep saying that for a few more months. 120 thousandths. Yeah, 120 thousandths on the spine. So not a super duper thick blade. Okay, meat and potatoes time. Did I mention how much I like the aesthetic? Man, this is a good looking knife. Such a good looking knife. And God, the comfort here. It really, I gotta, I gotta be honest with you. It reminds me a lot of the feeling I get when I hold my Shirogorov F3 NS, which is a $900 pocket knife. The, the uh, palm swells here, the curvature of the handle, right? The, the subtle uh, contouring of the scales, and the fact that we do have kind of an abrupt drop off, but they are soft, right? When you actually feel them. The, especially back here, I mean, that's really where you, when you're squeezing, that's where you're going to feel it. And this area right here is just wonderful. The pocket clip is just a, it's essentially perfection. Drop, slight, slight ramp to the spoon bill, just fine. Man, this is comfortable. I, I am a, a sucker for really good ergonomics. And when you can do that and make a knife look this good, man, imagine. <laughs> <laughs> that's like that's get that's like building a Corvette that has the fuel efficiency uh, of a Prius but keeps the same horsepower and sound, right? Uh, that's just man, that's uh, that's unreal. I, I I I can't stress this enough, guys. This is a very comfortable knife. Long period cutting, just like cutting, 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 right? This is the type of thing that I I, I really like. I'm also kind of a sucker for forest green on anything. I like it a lot more than OD green. OD green is like if you took forest green and just left it out in the sun, like it got cooked, right? Forest green is just more rich. It's just more vibrant. It's closer. It's kind of in between, you know, on the scale of emerald to OD, forest is somewhere in between, right? Why is he telling us what color forest green is? We can see it. <laughs> Anyways, um, the overall aesthetic of the knife is also very good because we don't have a lot going on outside. I really wish that they had gone uh, out of their way to make the real steel logo a, a bit smaller because look at the non-show side. This looks so much more clean, right? But that's okay. It says real steel. Uh, and then it has, uh, of course, the designer's uh, name right there, which can we see? Yeah, Ivan D., um, which, again, his uh, his designs have, are starting to become sort of iconic um, because we see them with so many different companies. 14C, 28N, and then, of course, the stag. I think that's a stag beetle on his logo there. I like the fuller there. You can't really use it for anything, but it does look nice. The edge is ridiculously thin. Now, uh, personally, um, I the, the downside to a Scandi grind for me is I'll never be able to sharpen it in a way that will fully emphasize the Scandi grind factory. I know other, other people know how to do it. I'm not well-versed in this art, right? But one thing is for certain, because of the geometry, this is insane. <laughs> I forgot. I have forgotten how utterly ridiculous. Just doing like a push. Oh my gosh. These these grinds are just ridiculous. They are so sharp. And you know, for a while, <laughs> for a while, you'll get by with just stropping this, right? Uh, once the edge becomes fatigued, right, you can't get by with that anymore. You're going to have to actually sharpen it. And 
most people will end up with more of a traditional bevel, I guess. It's, it's interesting. Um, but, uh, I mean, there, there are videos on YouTube that show how to maintain edges like this. I just, I've never done it, right? So, um, yeah, cutting anything, I mean, because of the geometry of this and the steel, is, uh, cutting anything that a knife is meant to cut, it, this should make it, in a lot of cases, easier, right? Um, you're still working with the geometry of the blade, though, so I guess it really does depend on what you're cutting. But one, one thing is for sure, here's what I'm going to say. Instead, you know, all, all I'm doing is just lighting a bunch of fuses that lead to, you know, powder kegs around, like, all the level 100 bush lords. Um, I, uh, I, I don't know exactly what this is going to be proficient at, except for, like, when you're doing generic slicing tasks and cutting tasks, the geometry and the final apex of this knife will at least until it starts to dull, it will make things wonderfully simple. Uh, this thing will glide, it will melt the material that you're cutting. These grinds are insane. Um, really cool edge up here, knocked down, right? Not great if you like to strike flint off of your folding knife. Great if you don't do that and you don't care and you just don't like to touch a sharper, you know, super sharp edge like the one out here. You can see that one out there is much sharper, right? So if you can get your flint clear out here, then yeah, it'll work. We got kind of a two-tone, like a belt satin finish, then we got like a tumbled finish here. Looks good. Um, that's pretty much it. There's really not a whole lot to talk about with the blade. I mean, it's going to do what you want it to do. It is a long, scandy grind, you know, drop point blade. Really nice. Um, let's move on here. There is a lanyard hole. Great. Uh, there's a super long backspacer, which sometimes I like how it looks and sometimes I don't. I got to be honest, I kind of like how this looks. They've also, it's the, the backspacer itself is radiused. So you can see there, it's actually like, it's got, it's, it's crowned, which is cool. Pocket clip, like I said, very, very good. Uh, and it is reversible. Lefties, you'll love this just as much as a right handed person because it, is an ambidextrous locking system so that's really cool the only difference is what you see on the show side of your knife right lockout completely and totally solid there is no blade play up down left or right on this thing um, not generally a locking system you have to worry about you have to be you have to really not know what you're doing um, to make a crossbar lock knife not work this is a very good locking system no blade play up down left or right very smooth and consistent in here and then we have your typical sort of event horizon detent. I mean, it is the detent, right? It's being created by the curved, uh, the, the curved, um, you know, the rounded tang of the blade uh, reaching an event horizon against the crossbar lock and then snapping into place. How much is this beautiful knife? Um, this beautiful knife is $79, which I'm going to be honest with you. I, I, I really wish that it would just, I, I was like, Bet, please come in at $74.99 so I can call it a budget knife, right? What it does it really matter what if I label this as budget knife or not? I mean, here, here's let me let me um, try and rise above that here real quick and just say I think the value here is 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 here. It's present, right? Whether somebody like me labels it as a budget knife or not, seventy nine dollars is a good price for this. I'm happy with that. Um, I think that they would be very smart to make a shorter version of this. Make a version of it that's about seven and a half inches long for people who like it but just want to carry a smaller knife, right? Um, yeah, I know, uh, putting a Scandi grind on a folding knife, you're never going to realize the maximum potential of a knife like this, and it's not necessarily going to be the ideal, the most utilitarian, the most optimized tool for the bush. <laughs> the bush. Um, I, I know, but th this is a group that's easy to poke at because they, they get a little, they get a little riled up. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's cool though. It's, it's fun. There's, I mean, like if we're going to, if we're going to talk about like, you know, not being able to like min max the benefits of a scanning ground and a folding knife, like, holy crap, have you been anywhere else in the knife world? Like this is, this is the tip of the iceberg in terms of things that are, you know, useless or not fully realized because they are taking place or being implemented on a folding knife. Like, dear Lord, let me show you half of my collection, right? There's, there's tons of stuff out there like this. This is just interesting huge fan of Ivan uh, D designs. I keep wanting to say, sometimes I say Ivan D, sometimes I say Ivan B because it's Ivan D and then his last name begins with a B. But Ivan's designs are very, very good looking. This is really cool. If you decide to pick this knife up, you will really like it. I think this thing is kind of flying under the radar and you guys are probably seeing this in 2024. I've had this. 
um, you know, for a, a couple of months now. I should have reviewed it sooner, but yeah, um, don't uh, don't overlook this. This is a beautiful knife. It's made very very well. It is made in China, by the way, but it's real steel. You guys probably knew that, um, but just just awesome stuff. So. Very recommendable knife. This is going to go on my most recommended knives playlist. Thanks to Real Steel for sending it in. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.